Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we are going to be reading stories of cryptids. I hope you enjoy them. Also, in keeping with our February collab month, today we are going to be joined by Entropic Society. The link to his channel will be in the description down below. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. Posted by you slash me. One four zero zero. Something in the woods. Need help identifying. This story is a hundred percent true, and I'm writing it on here to warn other people and let them know that there's definitely something out there. And to this day, I still don't know what it was, nor have I gone into any woods or forest whatsoever. If you don't believe me, that's completely fine. Read this as a fun story at your own expense, but for those of you out there with an open mind or you've seen something yourself, just know that you're not alone. And just typing out and remembering this account is causing me to shake with anxiety and fear. First off, I am a girl and live in North Carolina of the United States. I was 15 at the time of my encounter and was definitely not a believer in anything supernatural paranormal, or anything of the sort. It happened while I was at a local summer camp. There was absolutely nothing special about that day. No weird lights, people, animals, sounds, nothing. It was just the same camp schedule as I'd grown used to in the past two weeks I'd been there. My age group had just finished lunch and was able to persuade her counselor to let us play a game called Scatter Down by the Lake. It's like a giant hide-and-seek game in the woods. Now, we had played this at least 20 times before that day, and nothing weird had happened to any of us. And we all grew up playing in the woods, so it's not like we had an aversion or fear of it. But for some reason, that day when our counselor shouted, Scatter! And I ran to find a hiding place. It became a whole new ball game. I had run as fast and as far as I could while still being able to see the lake as were the rules, and had found a huge old uprooted tree that I decided would be the perfect hiding place. So I laid down as close as I could against the ground and waited. I had been there for about five minutes when I suddenly heard a voice calling my name, in a weird dreamy-like voice. Not just any voice, but my mom's. Now me and my mom were extremely close, thick as thieves, so I'd know her voice anywhere and I would swear on my own grave that it was without a doubt hers. But I knew it couldn't be hers. She was 20 miles away at work, and even if that actually had been her, she'd come to pick me up early. The voice wasn't coming from the lake. It was coming further out in the woods, beyond the border of the camp. I knew I should have run far away from the strange mimic mom voice, but I couldn't. It was almost hypnotic. It messed with my thoughts and gave me doubts like, well, it could be my mom, or what if she's hurt, and I'll have to get her. All these things were flooding into my mind like someone had broken the dam. I didn't know was there until they finally overwhelmed me and emotions got the better of me, and I took off running in the direction of the voice was coming from. I ran as far as I could with only this strange voice as my guide. I could not have run for more than five or seven minutes when I got into a clearing and the voice suddenly stopped. When I entered the clearing and didn't hear my mom's voice calling me anymore, I could finally think clearly again and started to have a little alarm bells going off inside my head, saying, you idiot, or that's not mom, and run. But I couldn't run. I didn't know where to run. I had gotten so far away I'd lost sight of the lake by the camp and absolutely no idea where I was, and I was completely exhausted to boot. 
With no other options than to sit and catch my breath, I did just that. No sooner had I sat down, more warning bells went off in my mind. I quickly did a 360, surveying around the clearing, and noticed a strange noise. It wasn't the continuation of the voice before, no. It was the distinct sound of chattering teeth, like if you were cold, only there was no one else around, and it was the middle of June in North Carolina. There's no way someone could be cold. And that's when I heard it. Leaves and sticks crunching on the ground on the edge of the small clearing, and I realized something was watching me. Then whatever it was moved fast and in circles around the clearing, almost like it was circling its prey. It was at that moment I knew whatever it was had led me out of the area, away from the rest of the group, exactly like the predator my instincts had been screaming at me that it was. Without any other option other than to try to escape, I took off in the direction I thought I came from and sprinted as fast as I could all the while hearing the chittering of teeth and sticks crunching behind me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't dare turn around seeing what was chasing me. I knew that if I did, I'd slow down and I would absolutely would not. It felt like a lifetime running away from this thing before I finally saw the lake. And even though I didn't think I could, I ran faster than I ever have in my life when I broke the tree line and ran to the lake where I knew my friends were. At that point, I felt safe enough to stop and look back and see what had been chasing me. But when I did, I only saw a fleeting form running back the way I'd come, and the distinct sound of chittering teeth. When I finally found my counselor, who was the seeker to find all of us, I was hysterical with fear and hugged her as tight as I could. When I finally calmed down, she tried to get me to tell her what had happened, but I just asked, why were you calling my name? Before she even said anything, I already knew the answer. After all, it had been my mom's voice that led me away from everyone else. But what she said replied with was so much more bone-chilling to me. She told me, No one called for you. We didn't even know you were gone. Everyone else is still hiding. The game isn't even over yet. This was a few years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday. A friend and I were in the woods just taking a hike. While on our way, we noticed that the forest had gone completely silent, and there was a chill to the air that hadn't been there earlier. Now I live in the North Georgia mountains, so a sudden change in weather isn't that strange. But this was different. Along with the silence, there was this sense that something very wrong and dangerous was very near. It was such a strong feeling that we became frozen in fear and apprehension. It all came to a head when our eyes caught movement behind a rather large tree. Now, for a bit of context, the air had gotten so cold that we could see our breath. And it was August. What we saw was a creature that had a deer skull for a head, with antlers that extended more flat out than up, and a pitch black cloak that seemed to suck the very daylight and it became noticeably darker. It had bone hands with sharp claws at the ends, that it had stretched around the tree as it leaned around to stare at us with its pitch black eyes. They felt like a void of darkness and terror. We could see its breath in the chilly air, and as it stared at us, we both had this complete belief that if we turned our backs and ran, we would disappear forever. After what felt like an hour, but was maybe just a few seconds, it seemed to have gotten or done whatever it wanted and leaned back behind the tree and disappeared. And the temperature returned. And so too did the sounds of the woods, slowly but surely. My friend won't talk about it to anyone. And I've only told one other person about what I saw that day. It was so terrifying that I won't ever forget what I saw. It will forever haunt my dreams and memories. I don't know what I saw that afternoon, but I was hoping that maybe if I shared it, someone else might have seen something similar and might have an idea 
as to what we saw. I used to work at a cheesecake factory on the edge of a cornfield in southwestern Minnesota. There were a series of days in the summer of 04 or 05 where it was so hot that the milk being delivered to us in trucks would evaporate before we got it. It made work easy. The dearth of milk denied us any actual labor. But management wouldn't let us not come to work, so we would show up and mess around the entire shift. I was working nights at the time. It was 2 or 3 a.m., and I was out on the loading dock watching bats fly around the floodlights, because I like being out in the cool night air. The corn was about as high as my shoulder, so about five foot ten. As I was watching the bats, I looked down at the edge of the cornfield. Something was moving there. It was the size of a small child, and very, very skinny, and pale, with something that looked like the head of straight black hair. It moved in a sort of jerky gait, like someone dancing the robot really badly. It moved in chunks, legs, then hips, then torso, shoulders, neck, and finally head. It was looking back into the cornfield, or at least I felt like it was. I felt prickly all over. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a heron or something at first, but it looked too much like a person. It didn't move like a person, though. Gradually, step by step, it moved towards me. Letting my curiosity better my fear, I moved towards the edge of the dock, which was raised a few feet off of the ground. When I got within a few feet of the edge, the thing looked at me. I was paralyzed. I could have run, but I was stuck somewhere between terrified and intrigued. It moved. Its face still pointed at me. It ratcheted its body in that disconcerting, jerky movement towards the cornfield and went into it. I tried to watch where the field moved as it passed, but the corn remained perfectly still. I noticed that all the crickets were silent. After a few minutes, nothing happened. I stood out there for an hour, but it never came back. And I never saw it again. So I live in a rural area, which in the past used to be farmland, but since has been reclaimed by the forest. There is very dense undergrowth such as thorns and vines and a lot of stuff to trip over. Anyway, there's a trail that I walk every day multiple times. As I like to smoke back there, this trail is the only clear path through the woods. It leads in for about 150 feet and then stops in a dead end. This was my favorite spot. I still walk it today, and have for four years. Usually I wake up and go straight to the trail before I'm even fully awake. So one day last summer, it's 11 a.m., because I'm a typical teenager, I'm half awake and walking the trail. I'm almost at the end when I hear the underbrush rustling with the sound of something bipedal moving fast. So naturally, I'm like, what the hell? And I'm looking for the source of the sound, when I see about 20 feet away from me past the end of the trail a large black figure taking off away from me. Now I stand an even six foot tall, and whatever this was was probably just as tall or taller than me. Once I realized what was going on, I took off running back to my house. Now I realize it was most likely a person who got caught where they weren't supposed to be, but it's fun to think that I could have encountered a Bigfoot in my own backyard. And ever since this happened, I'm always paranoid that someone slash something is watching me in those woods. It's made me extremely hyper aware, and I feel like those woods aren't mine anymore. Also, if it was a person, what the hell were they doing sneaking through the woods so close to my house, and then sprinting away when they were caught?
So I just found out that this truly horrifying experience is actually a cryptid. Okay. So this was and still is a truly horrifying and scarring experience that I had maybe last year. Even typing about this gives me anxiety and flashbacks. So the story is very simple because there are only three other encounters with this being that are documented that I know of. And it was very fast, but very traumatizing, like I stated earlier in this post. So I stayed up in my room a little bit later than I intended. I was on my computer facing away from my door and out of the corner of my eye, I see him waving at me from around the wall, only exposing his hand and his face. I quickly spun my head around to look and he was gone instantly. I sat there, frozen in fear for maybe 10 to 20 minutes. I finally got up and checked behind the wall. He was gone. Nowhere to be seen. I thought it was some sort of hallucination. But I've recently heard of injured cold. And I'm thinking that maybe that's what I saw. Two thousand and nine, southeastern Wisconsin. I was in the car home from my mom's. I was in the passenger seat and gazing at the scenery when I saw what looked to be a shadow of a giant bird that was on the outer wall of a huge factory. I looked up to the sky and saw it disappear into cloud cover. The entire experience lasted about fifteen seconds. For years I assumed that my eyes were playing tricks on me until I met my new manager at work two months ago, who told me a similar story of a giant bird-like creature that he came across while driving. I was instantly brought back to that day and was assured that although I might be crazy, I did see what I saw. Anyone else ever see one? This is why I'm afraid of the dark. Back when I was about three or four years old, I lived and still live in the same apartment. Whenever I would walk down the hallway to my bathroom or my mom's bedroom, I would see strange figures in the dark. Not just shadows, but physical beings that I was able to touch. When I turned six years old, I didn't see the figures as often as I used to. But one night while I was walking down to the bathroom, I was tripped by one of the figures. It didn't just stick its foot out in front of me or anything like that. Instead, it came up through the floor and grabbed me by my ankles. I fell and hit my head on the kitchen bar to my right and got knocked out. When I woke back up, I saw another figure in front of me, and I immediately covered my face, because as a six-year-old, I still thought that it made the figures ignore me. But instead of it just going past me, it picked me up and put me back on my feet. To this day... I still don't know why the figure helped me, but I do know that not all of the figures were good. Now I don't ever go down that hallway without the lights on, even during the day. Last year, in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, I took my girlfriend out hunting. A couple hours in, and we weren't really seeing anything. I bent down to grab a beer, which was on the other side of my girlfriend. As I came back up, I glanced out the window to see if there were any deer. But I saw this tall, lanky, pale and bald creature of some sort running through the woods, faster than anything I've ever seen. I'd have to say it cleared a hundred foot section of woods in at least a couple of seconds. Luckily, it never saw me, or so I think. It looked like it was trying to run behind the blind. Safe to say, my girlfriend and I got the hell out of there as soon as possible, with a fully loaded 30-30 and not much else. Not that that would have done anything to that thing. The scariest part about this story is that my girlfriend finally got to see it with her own eyes, running across the highway right by my land meaning it's still stalking my woods. What do you guys think this is? 
I've been teetering on a skinwalker for about a year now. But now that I've found this subreddit, I'd like to get others' opinions. Thank you for reading. Okay, so four days ago, I was walking home from my cousin's house. His house is in Carter Lake, Iowa, by the way. So on the way home, I was walking along a set of train tracks because it's nice and quiet. And I thought it was safe until four days ago when I saw what I think was a black dog. For those of you that don't know, a black dog in most mythology and legends is a bad omen or a demonic entity that can cause accidents or misfortune. Anyways... I saw the black dog and I started walking faster. The dog followed me from the other side of the train tracks and it kept pace with me. So I started running and the dog started running as well and it started to bark. But it didn't sound like a normal dog barking. It sounded more metallic and it also had a strange echo to it. So when I heard that I started to run up the hill to my right because that's the direction where the nearest road is. But because the hill is so steep I pretty much had to climb it and the dog tried to climb it as well. But when it got up just below me, I kicked it in the nose and it yelped as it fell down the hill. When I made it up the hill, I looked back down the hill, but the dog was gone, and I ran the rest of the way home. And once I got home, my lungs were burning because I just ran about one and a half to two miles without stopping. Since this incident, I have not seen the dog again. Please let me know if this is a black dog or something else this goes back several days slash months I saw what I thought was a dog slash wolf's feet running down the road I couldn't see if it was a dog or wolf because of the blinds one to three days later, at certain times during the day and night, it would sound like something would jump up and crawl over the ventilation unit next to my house. So I looked outside and nothing was there. So I got suspicious, especially because there was no one near the unit. And it would have taken them a long time to get away because I looked at it immediately through my bedroom window that is one to two feet away from it to the left. Only looked outside at daytime because I'm a scaredy cat. And at night, the noises would come from multiple sides of the house. I thought it was raccoons. One to three days later. Friends that I invited over were complaining about smells like rotten fish slash flesh. One to five days later. The smell went away on its own. And that night, I accidentally stayed up to 2.30 a.m. And I had this feeling to get out of my room and to make myself hidden. So, I decided to do it because I was bored. I got out of my bedroom and hid behind the wall connecting my room to the kitchen. Then there was a huge bang against the wall next to my window in my room. The place my feeling told me to avoid. Then I froze in fear in my kitchen as I heard the sounds of loud bangs, the sounds of running, and the sounds of trash cans falling over all around my house, including on the roof. I managed to make myself move to get my computer and frantically research about what the F was going on. And I found out, according to this source, that they are most frequently seen as coyotes, wolves, foxes, eagles, owls, or crows. My grandmother also saw a coyote slash wolf when she was coming to visit me. I also heard that they smell like things rotting because of their flesh and that they try to break into the house or harass you by doing most of the noises that I listed. These creatures were trying to lure me outside the whole time I was researching by mimicking a woman's voice. Today, the smell is back, and I don't know how to ward them off.
From roughly 2000 to 2005, I lived on the south edge of northern Virginia. This was a rural area with houses set far apart from each other surrounded by fairly dense woods. There was a phenomenon that I came to call the woods walkers. Due to insomnia, I had a bad tendency to stay up very late at night, sometimes all the way until dawn. Frequently, I'd leave the window partially open all night long to let in a cool breeze. On some occasions late at night, well after midnight, I'd hear something loudly crashing through the woods behind the house. It always sounded like a large man staggering drunkenly through the woods, always along the same path from the direction of the driveway, down towards the Bull Run River. The leaves would be rustling very loudly, as if a large person was carelessly dragging their feet along the ground. Branches would be snapping as if the person was lurching blindly through the forest. I couldn't tell if it was one person or several people, but the passing through the woods always created an alarming amount of noise. I came to expect to hear the woodwalkers every two weeks or so. After a while, whenever I heard the noise of the woodwalkers, I would peer out the window trying to discern who or what would be making all the noise at such a late hour. I never saw a thing. No outlines of figures and no glow from a flashlight. The really strange thing about this to me is that the apparent path they were traversing came from nowhere and went nowhere. They just stumbled through the woods, apparently tearing their own path through the wilderness, going deeper into the woods. It's also bizarre that they would go crashing through the deep dark woods at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. when it's black as pitch without using a source of light. It seems impossible to me that anyone could find their way through the woods in that dark like that. On one particular occasion, I heard the woodwalkers behind the house. Then I heard a bunch of gunshots from directly behind the house. It sounded to me like a handgun, maybe a 9mm or a 38 Special. The next morning, I wandered around the edge of the yard searching for expended brass, but didn't find anything. I found no traces or signs of anyone passing through the woods. In the days after I heard the gunshots, I became increasingly determined to solve the strange mystery of the woodwalkers. I put a flashlight on the small dresser by my door. I patiently waited night after night to hear the woodwalkers come staggering through the woods. Sure enough, one night I heard the familiar sound of something crashing eerie and slowly through the woods behind the house. I leapt up and rushed to gather the things I intended to carry outside with me as I went to confront whatever it was that passed through the woods. I frantically pulled off my sweatpants and put on my jeans. I searched for my keychain, then unlocked the lockbox in which I kept my pistol, loaded ammunition into the pistol and tucked it into my belt. I grabbed my flashlight and quietly descended into the basement then out the back door into my backyard. It took me far too long to get outside. By the time I cautiously strode out under the moonlight, I could hear the noisy movement of the woodwalkers receding into the distance. I walked slowly and stealthily out of the edge of the woods and pulled my pistol out of my belt. I crept soundlessly down the hill into the dark woods. I positioned myself defensively behind a large tree in case the woodwalkers carried firearms. I peered warily in the direction of the noise. My eyes strained to see whatever was out there, but I could discern nothing through the shadowy branches of the forest. After a while, I pointed my flashlight towards the direction of the noise and turned it on. My night vision was instantly ruined by the reflection of light from the tangled mass of trees and branches. I turned the light off and listened to the sound of the woodwalkers fade away. I went back inside in defeat. To this day, I wonder about the strange mystery of the woodwalkers. I'll never know who or what it was. I am an outdoorsman. I am very experienced in hunting, camping, hiking, and general survival. I am very familiar and used to wildlife, and I was charged by what I believe was a cryptid called a dog man. It charged me and my cousin. It was not a bear. A bear cannot move how it did, and it was not a normal wolf as they can't comfortably run on two legs. 
whereas what charged us seemed natural at doing so. This happened around June or July of 2007, I believe. I was around 17 years old and was more cocky back then, but still somewhat knowledgeable of the outdoors. My family used to own a cabin in northwestern Wisconsin. I basically grew up there in the summer. I knew the woods well, but at night it was wise to stay in the cabin or at least by the bonfire by the beach because of wolves, bears, and cougars. One of the creepiest things was if you were having a bonfire, the tree line was visible from the fire pit and beach. And at night, you always felt like you were being watched from that tree line. During the day, the woods always seemed normal, not so creepy. That is until this incident. So this happened somewhere between 12 o'clock and two in the afternoon. Me and my cousin were having an airsoft battle. I was in full woodland camo. He was not. I retreated into the ATV trail into the woods for a tactical advantage and our battle took us 200 meters into a third of the way up the trail. We had enough at this point and were standing at the edge of a clearing on the trail, talking, and he was maybe 10 feet from me when I decided to mess with him. I shushed him and said, Shh, we're being watched. He froze. Then I realized the woods were dead quiet and I got spooked and started scanning the tree line and the other edge of the clearing from left to right when I saw it. Its teeth gave it away. It was panting and staring at my cousin. I don't expect you to believe me, but what I saw was a wolf as big as a black bear, at least 300 pounds, but it wasn't normal. This wolf was on two legs crouching next to the tree with its arm grasping the tree, grasping with a clawed hand. It had reddish fur. I told my cousin that we have to go. And next thing I know, he is sprinting. And I look back at Wolfie, who had locked on and sprinted a few steps on two feet. And then I turned and ran, when it looked like Wolfie was dropping to all fours. It charged us and sounded right on our butts, barreling through the brush. But for whatever reason, let us go when we broke out of the tree line and headed for the cabin. What stuck with me the most was the sheer size. Wolfie appeared to be nearly seven foot tall when upright. And where it should have had front paws... It appeared to have large clawed hands. Now I'm not sure how to explain it away rationally. I've heard wolves will occasionally kind of walk upright, but as far as I know they can't sprint on two legs, nor do wolves get that big, and black bears more waddle on two legs. The closest description is silly, a werewolf, or a dogman. My grandpa was telling me a story in the summertime, and I guess I never felt the need to share because I didn't know a platform to share it on, but now I've found one. I apologize if some details are left out. I have forgotten some of the things he told me, such as names, and what year this happened in. I believe it happened in the 60s. It happened near the Sandy Bay Aboriginal Reserve, which is in southern Manitoba. It was midwinter, and Manitoba gets plenty of snow. My grandpa told me his two friends, a wife and a husband, were walking from their car to their house carrying all of their luggage. It was just their cabin, not their house, so they were carrying the luggage up to the cabin. The first thing they noticed was a bright, bright light shining into the cabin. It illuminated the entire cabin and was a fluorescent shade of icy blue. The husband thought he saw a silhouette of a strange, tall humanoid in the home. It was lanky and very tall, standing alone before it walked out of sight. Quickly, he ran into the house with his wife. They searched the house and there was nothing. So the wife went back out to grab more luggage. The husband said that he heard a shriek from outside and quickly ran out to make sure that she was okay. He was shocked to find her footprints leading up to the car. Yet she was about 25 feet away from the car in the woods with no tracks leading towards her. If she were to walk out there by herself, her tracks would obviously be there. He ran out to her. She was distraught and hollering and screaming, and her eyes were glazed over. He took her in and she refused to speak. 
She was admitted into a mental hospital soon after, and to this day has the same glossed over eyes, and she still can't speak. She experienced a horrible trauma out there, and I believe it's because of whatever the humanoid creature was. My grandpa still talks to her husband sometimes, and I believe he visited her about 30 years ago at the hospital, since he doesn't live too many hours away. If anyone has any theories about this, feel free to comment. Or, if there are any more questions, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. This story took place at a church camp, which is sort of like a Christian summer camp, when I was eight years old. It started at night when I was trying to sleep. It was hot, and I felt like something heavy was setting on my chest. Not like a weight, but like a hand. I could feel each individual finger pressing down, almost like it was trying to pierce my chest with its fingertips. When I opened my eyes, I was so scared I almost burst into tears right then and there. But I feel like if I did, something even worse would have happened. Not just to me, but to the other kids in the room with me as well. Instead, I just laid there in my bunk bed trying not to keep it from knowing I was awake. After a few hours, it stopped and left. What I saw when I opened my eyes was a tall, skinny figure with long arms. It had black eyes with red pupils that almost glowed in the dark. Large hands with slender fingers and a mouth so wide if it opened its mouth, it would look like a hole. When I woke up in the morning, I felt a burning sensation on my chest. When I looked, I saw red marks where the thing had touched me. Things were pretty much normal until the middle of the day, when everyone would go to the main building where we would all attend church and pray. While we were in the middle of a prayer, I opened my eyes to look up at the front of the room, and I saw the figure standing in front of me, and when I saw it, it put one hand over my mouth and pushed the other hand into my chest. It didn't tear a hole in my chest. Instead, it just went inside like it wasn't there. But I could still feel it inside my chest. Its hands wrapped around my heart. Not a squeezing feeling, but a burning feeling. Almost like a red-hot fire poker touching bare skin. I was crying the whole time trying to pull its hand out of my chest. But I wasn't strong enough and it only stopped after the prayer was over. It just disappeared and was gone, but I could still feel the burning sensation in my chest after we were done in the church that day. The day continued like normal, like the thing was done doing what it needed to do. After this incident, I never went back to church camp again, and I also stopped going to church because I never wanted to see that thing ever again. And to this day, I'm happy to say that I haven't seen it since. I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this, but I would like to know if anyone has seen something similar. Around two years ago, one of my friends was moving from the Appalachia region to Florida in a few days, and we decided to go catfishing before he left. We didn't catch anything that night on the river, and we left around 2 to 3 a.m. On my drive back, we hit a fog. I remember the window was cracked because I was smoking a stogie. My friend was half asleep in the passenger seat but still conscious. I had just looked up from changing the song on my phone, and right in front of the car was what I can only describe as a shadow being. It was tall and stood on two legs. It had no color or details, just a black void in the shape of an upright silhouette. It was right in front of my headlight too, and it still didn't show any detail. The thing about this whole experience that terrified me the most was after it had passed us, it smacked the weeds and tall grass on the side of the road, and it made such a loud sound because of how fast it was moving. Hearing that noise after what I had just saw sent a chill down my spine. My friend and I didn't say much, except to confirm to ourselves we had indeed saw what we had saw. An Appalachian shadow man. I've never seen something like that before or since. 
please comment if someone has seen something like this. It would be interesting to get more insight on what I saw that night. not sure what I saw. This story is kind of long. I've lived at my current house in North Carolina for about three years. When I first moved in, I had all kinds of weird encounters at night. I would be outside burning off tree limbs and things like that. I always felt like something was watching me. After the first few nights, I heard what sounded like someone calling for help, very muffled from the woods that surrounded my house. I shrugged it off. After a few times of that, I was walking the tree line and looking for more wood to throw on the fire. Keep in mind, this was around 1 to 2 a.m., and I had a 30-30 shell thrown at me. I don't own a 30-30, so I thought it was very weird. Anyway, this goes on for a few months until my ex came in, and we brought our kids in the house to live. My ex had chickens and a pig that got out of their enclosure and were killed. She threw the carcasses into the woods. I know. I don't know why she did that either. But after that, all the spooky stuff stopped. No more eerie feelings. No noises, nothing. Now fast forward to last month. I've since gotten a new girlfriend and she takes our dogs out in the early AM hours before she leaves for work. I leave the house at 4.15 AM, so it's probably about 5.30 AM or so when she's out with them. Twice in the last two months, She's seen what she described as something large and pale in the wood line. The first time was last month. It saw her and hurried off. This morning as she was walking the dogs, our large dog was barking like crazy, and she saw this white creature again. She said it moved like it was scuttling, larger than a deer and on all fours, but almost like what a human looks like running on all fours. As soon as the dogs got a good look at it, they began trying to run back into the house. She and the dogs flew back inside, and she got ready to leave for work. She didn't see anything else so far, but I'm just wondering what's up. What could we do? What does it sound like? All the other encounters I've had, I never saw a physical form. Only noises and eerie feelings. According to her, this thing has moved closer to the house up the wood line. I'm just kind of lost. I doubt shooting at it would help. Any advice or theories would be welcome. About five years ago, when I was 17, I visited some of my family who lived in South Dakota and worked there for the summer. After about a month, my brother, sister, and her husband decided to do what Americans do best and go shoot guns in the woods. I had to work an evening shift, so it was decided we'd go after around 10 p.m. Once my shift ended, we went to their house to pack up the truck with some snacks, guns, and ammo. The drive took around 45 minutes, and it took us up a dirt road surrounded by trees and tall grass. Eventually, it opened up into a clearing that was pretty open and flat. The nearest tree line was about 100 feet away. It was pretty dark, but the clearing was lit up by the trucks and headlights. I kind of felt uneasy, but I chalked that up to just being in the woods at night. For the first 20 minutes, nothing really happened. We were just setting up plastic bottles and those plastic gallon buckets you'd get water out of at an office. There was a feeling of being watched that we all felt. The area suddenly reeked of spoiled eggs. Those of you who have shot guns know they can smell. But even since being in the military, no amount of guns or explosives have smelt this bad. We looked around to see if we could see the source. And what I saw, I can still vividly remember to this day. What I saw was a thin humanoid figure crouching down looking at us. Even while crouching down, it was still about six feet in height. When I say this figure was thin... I mean skin and bones barely do it justice. The even weirder thing about this was we all saw the figure in different spots in the tree line, but we all described the same features. Tall, thin, 
and had long, dark hair. We quickly packed up what we could and left. The feeling of dread that I felt that day will forever haunt me. Since then, my brother mentioned the area might have been in native territory, but I don't know if that's true. Every once in a while, I think back on that day, and I look up different stories and encounters people have had in the woods, but nothing quite resembles what I saw that day. A friend and I saw something several years back. It was very thin, and its skin looked as if it had full body latex suit on. Very shiny. Bone structure in its face, but no eyes or orifices. You could see the ribs. Its head was elongated, and fingers long and pointy. Had a peculiar looking gait to it. This was late at night, and the creature was directly under security light in my friend's backyard. We had been sitting quietly in his truck. This thing walked up, not noticing us, maybe 15 feet in front of us, directly under the security light. My friend screamed and it jumped and faced us. It then took off towards the woods. We had been gone for a while and just sitting in the driveway chilling before we went in. We had actually pushed the truck to the house because we had ran out of gas right before we got back to his house. We finally got brave enough to run into the house but the door was locked and he didn't have a key because he never locked the house. Then we go around the house to try to get through his bedroom window, only to find that it was open. Not only was it open, but the screen was wadded up and shredded on the ground. Anyone have any idea what this thing could have been? This was in 1996 or 97, and I've never been able to figure it out. I was probably 15 or late 14 at the time, midsummer time. Me and two of my friends left a girl's house late at night, basically sneaking out. She lived deep kinda in the countryside about a 45 minute walk to get to the city line. We left at about two in the morning, me and my two friends. We stepped out of her country subdivision road onto a main paved country road. We took a left onto the main road. We look on our right, you could basically just see road and woods each direction with some mailboxes. But on the right side in our opposite direction, at the top or end of our view on the road, we could see just a white light or reflector imagine. Obviously that wasn't on our mind. Our mind was not being caught by cops or anything out past curfew. We walked left the opposite direction. As we were walking, cars would occasionally drive by so to be safe, we would hide in the woods or tree line every passing car, just in case it was a cop. Every time we would watch a car go by our opposite traveling direction, basically we would look back and the white object was getting closer quite fast. You could only see it in headlights. Once the headlights were gone, it was like it was also basically gone. We continued walking, all seeing it just confused, but didn't care to wait. We got to about the town line. This thing was probably only like 200 to 500 feet behind us again. We could only see it in passing headlights. None of the cars seemed to notice. When the creature was close enough, it was translucent with white skin and big black hole eyes. Long limbs. It looked pretty skinny, but still could have been anywhere between 6 to 8, maybe more feet. We get into the start of town with house subdivision streets. Basically townhomes. Every four-way, we got to on our left, looking a four-way our opposite block street over. We could see the thing walking with our pace. When I got a side view of it, I noticed its arms hung down pretty low. It's like it was looking at us, but wasn't. Me and my friends that night weren't on any drugs and snuck outside at night quite a bit. So it wasn't just some fear or mistake. We were pretty, I guess, calm or casual because it kept distance. We were about in town and more worried about ourselves getting caught by the law. 
to this day. I still ride my bike around town at night and have for years, but I haven't seen anything at night like that since or before. I sometimes guess if it was just my vision, but both of my friends saw it too and definitely saw it more than three times without headlights at opposite four ways. It was a gray kind of cloudy night. Any help of what I might have seen? On Christmas, I left out a pretty bowl full of beautiful polished agates and eye of Shiva shells. Yesterday, I saw that some of the stones were on the ground, but it was raining, so I was unable to get a good look until this morning. I originally thought the stones had just been scattered, but they weren't. Several were laying on the ground as if someone had been looking through them one by one, setting the stones they didn't want on the ground so they could look through the bowl. I should have taken a photo, but I was excited and just wanted to get into cleanup mode and put the stones back into the bowl. I didn't notice that they took all but one of the Shiva shells, and that one happened to get covered by a leaf. I made sure to look through the leaves that were on the ground right there, and there were no more Shiva eyes left. I also think they took some of the agates, because it looks like there were fewer. Earlier this morning, while it was still dark, I took my dog out to pee. I suddenly turned because I felt like I was being watched, and a pair of those eyes were just 20 to 30 feet away from me, peeking just over the top of one of the cars in the driveway. Holy cow, y'all. I've seen their eyes so much, but never this close. They're huge. I thought it was a reflection on the roof of a car, but there were no light sources to be reflected. Then it clicked that I was seeing two round yellow eyes bobbing up and down from the other side of the car. It startled the crap out of me. I hurried my dog up to get him inside. Then I went out the back deck to watch their next moves. I never saw them, but I can feel their energy. I'm an empath slash clairsentient. And once I felt it go back into the woods, I went back out the front and saw them looking for me from the trees directly north of the car slash driveway. They were peeking around a bunch, like they were trying to see me. Honestly, I just stood there for a few watching them watch me. Dawn was breaking, so I knew they needed to go before they could be seen. As it was getting lighter, my mom called for me, so I just went ahead and left the driveway and went back into the house. Sorry for not thinking to take a photo of how they left the bowl. Someone would have probably called it fake anyways. I'm going to order more shells to repeat this experiment. I live next to a skinwalker. Me and my family have been seeing some stuff over the years, and to me it's terrifying. I've only experienced it two times. The first time was when I was like seven, and this is the worst paranormal thing I have witnessed looking back. But I went into the kitchen and looked out the back door and something laying down like a dog was looking at me. Like eye contact. One eye was yellow, the other was green. I tell everyone in the living room something is outside. And when they check, it's literally gone. The second time I saw it was when I was going to get firewood for the stove. And as soon as I open the door, something right there moves extremely fast, causing me to jump back. Other members of the family have experiences too. Like my sister who is taking the dog out to use the bathroom. There's an old wood shed that we don't use anymore. But that's where the dog used the restroom and my sister said, it looked at me which was absolutely terrifying. I took the dog out once it was the same spot. I turn around and look at a big bush. It starts shaking violently. I force the dog to move back with me to the house. My grandmother liked to be in her car while watching stuff and drinking beer. But one time it ran right past the front of her car and she couldn't leave. She asked us to go out there and escort her back. She doesn't do that anymore and 
It was like her favorite thing to do. Not sure if this is the same thing or if it's related, but another time when I was seven, I woke up and something whispered my name. This scared the absolute crap out of me, and I went crying to my older sister. This happened again when I was like 10, and they were both coming from the back porch, where I saw it laying like a dog. Speaking of my older sister, a while ago she was going up to the house through the back field, which was really high grass at that point. She and her friend stopped because of some of the rustling somewhere close, and something full sprint was going towards them, and they run to the house as quickly as possible. We haven't had much happen recently, until a few weeks ago. I was on a call with someone with my sister, and I was messing around screaming for some reason. Me and my sister hear something scream back. We both look at each other and go inside. We live in the woods, not close to much, so that really freaked me out. My father was with one of his friends and they were hunting. They see a skinwalker, because the deer they saw ran and hid behind a tree, which kept peeking at them, and eventually it runs off, but is much smaller. His friend got pictures of its footprints, which could be actual proof, but I can't get the pictures. The place they were was close, but not at our property. One of my biggest fears is one of our dogs coming back from outside, and it not being our dog, and it gets inside. My girlfriend and I are renting a cabin in West Virginia. On Thursday, a nasty ice storm came through and knocked out the power. It has been out ever since. The whole county is dark and will be for a while. The animals are acting bold. Last night, my girlfriend and I walked out to the end of the long driveway to get something out of a car. Her dog started staring at the edge of the field and went towards it. He's young, and so he gets distracted and does sometimes wander. He doesn't run away, but you will look up and see him behind the house or something. Anyway, my girlfriend runs to him and starts to bring him back when I spot something at the edge of the field. It's what the dog was looking at. I see it run across the road and into the field. It was very low to the ground and pale in color. It's too fast and dark to make out what it is. I assume it's a coyote. So I call out to her. Hey. There's something over there. Get back here. And she walks back over to me by the car. From there, we hold the light and shine it in that direction. I see its eyes looking at us. Then I see more sets of eyes. Probably about seven in total. They are shifting up and below the hill in the field. Hiding and peeking out to see us. At this point, we think it's coyotes. So I keep the light on them while she gets what she needs from the car. The thing is, I kept my light and my eyes on them the whole time, and they seemed to stand up. Suddenly, their eyes shine would rise up as if they stood up on their back legs. Their eyes went from about one to two feet off the ground to easily five to six feet. I did not mention this to her, and I just said, Coyotes, let's go inside. Throughout the night, we would have to go outside to put gas in the generator, as the power was still off. She held the flashlight and I filled up the generator. She's shining the light around, keeping an eye out for anything, as well as keeping the dog with us. She spots two sets of eyes about a hundred yards away at the bottom of the big hill that the house sits on. She says, something's down there. I say, coyotes or deer? She says, whatever it is, it just doubled in size. And sure enough, I look and those things are rising up and back down like the ones earlier. We have coyotes here. Everything about these events screams coyote to me, but I cannot fathom how they stood up like that. I saw it run across the road, and though I did not get a good look at it, it was not a deer. It was fast and low to the ground. It did not bound and jump like deer do. I've been thinking about it all day, like it had to be a coyote. But then, how did it get so tall?
So a few months ago, I was cycling home from my friend's house. It was pretty late and it was relatively dark. The sky was a dark blue and everything looked either black, dark gray, or brown. To get to my house, I cycled down a long, quiet road next to a large field. Around a third of the way up the road are some trees on either side that hunch over the road. To my right, about 15 yards away from me, I see something quickly retreat back into the trees. It was tall, grayish pink. I'm short-sighted, so I didn't make much of it, especially considering it was dark. I initially thought that it was just a smaller tree swaying back, but there was no wind, and if it was a tree, it wouldn't have literally shifted away. It would have stayed in the same spot and pivoted on it. My ride home from then on was, well, something. I constantly kept checking behind me and trying to convince myself what I saw was just an animal or something. I've seen things in the woods before. I've seen a creature similar to this at the end of my street. It stood by a lamppost. I'm not looking to know what it was or could be. I just want to know if anyone has seen anything similar. I believe I have discovered a new cryptid, or, well, me and my younger brother. It was terrifying even if the first encounter was for literal seconds. We were taking out the trash together one night during the summer. My brother wanted me to come up with him, because there have been animals going missing lately, and our parents assume it's been coyotes. We went out to take it, and I was looking out at the forest line in our backyard. If it wasn't for the back porch light, I wouldn't have seen the thing. It was running straight at us. It was about six feet tall, humanoid, and slightly hunched over with its legs spread out. So were its arms. I would have thought it was an actual naked person if it wasn't for the fact that it had no genitals, hair, body hair, or a face. It was completely featureless. Its skin looked like a whitish pink. I thought I was going insane, so I asked my brother if he saw it. He looked over and immediately sprinted to the house, and I followed behind, and I could hear the thing's feet smack against the hard ground as it moved faster to catch one of us. Luckily, we had a head start and got inside. We looked out the window to see if it was still there, but it was gone, and it was like the thing disappeared the second it realized that it wasn't getting to us. Our parents asked us what was wrong. We're both teenagers and knew neither of them would believe a word, so we lied. We said that we heard howling and got scared. We then both went to our room and questioned one another on what we think we saw. I first said on three we should say the color of the thing's skin. We counted. One, two, three. And we both said pink. And both of our faces went pale. We knew that we both weren't just seeing things. We had no proof. We had no other witness to it. It was just the two of us knowing that there was something roaming in the woods behind our house. More animals have gone missing in our neighborhood. Some of our own animals, too. So far, it's gotten four of our cats and two of our chickens. I never found the cats, but it did leave the chickens in the coop that we had them in. It was like it was sending us a message. The chickens' limbs were ripped off, and then it was ripped in half. There was blood everywhere. I sometimes feel like it stalks me in the woods. I never go near them at night, but I do sometimes go in them during the day. It feels like there's constantly something over my shoulder. Sometimes I hear fallen branches break, like something heavy stepped on it. I'll find limbs placed weirdly like in stacks. I have no idea what it is. All I know is that I will figure it out. If anyone has heard of something like this, please tell me. First sighting, June 21st, 2022. My experience is from late 2006. 
just before winter break of my freshman year of college. I went to a small college in rural western Pennsylvania, and the freshman parking lot was on the edge of campus, up against some state game lands. We'd go out there a couple of nights a week to smoke some weed, and that night, we went to our usual spot in a clearing with a fallen log to sit on, just past what you could see from the parking lot, though we could see the lights from the lot through the trees behind us. Now, I'm sure you're already thinking it was probably just the weed, but we were veteran smokers, had just started smoking that night, and had been smoking out of the same bag previous nights without any weird things happening. We packed a bowl and had maybe one hit each as we sat there talking quietly. It was winter, and this night was particularly cold, like in the teens, Fahrenheit, but very still, no wind, almost nothing making sound out in the woods where we were. I took my first hit and handed the bowl and lighter back to my friend, then looked up to exhale. That's when I saw it through the smoke, a humanoid face in the trees on the other side of the clearing, opposite the parking lot. It was just above a branch that it had wrapped its hand around. I think it had three fingers with a very long, narrow thumb that stuck out several inches past its other fingers, each tipped with a pointed nail. As the smoke cleared, I got a better look at its face. Very pale, almost grayish skin, bald, no eyebrows, no other hair of any kind, no ears that I could see, big eyes relative to its head that were very dark in color, catching just a little bit of light from the lights of the parking lot behind us, which made them seem kind of reflective. I didn't get a great look at the nose or mouth as I was fixated on the eyes, but from what I recall, they seemed small relative to its head compared to a human. I tapped my friend's knee and quickly glanced over at him to see if he saw it as well, and he was staring at it too. So it's something we both saw independently. I looked back at it just as it released its hand from the branch, revealing very long thin fingers to match the thumb, and then it moved backwards out of our sight without making a sound, even though there were dry leaves all over the ground. I'd guess only about five seconds actually passed during this span, but it felt much longer, and there was this odd calm over the whole situation. As soon as it was out of sight, however, my friend and I both felt an intense fear, and we ran back to the parking lot. It was in such a panic that he didn't realize he had stuffed the still-smoking bowl into his coat pocket and dropped the lighter. We ran to the opposite side of the lot from the woods where there was a road, some cars passing, and some other students walking around where we finally felt safe. There was an initial, oh my god, did you see that, what was that, kind of conversation before we calmed down and talked about the details of what we saw, which matched up perfectly. The only thing he noticed that I didn't was that he said he didn't think it even had a mouth. We thought maybe it was a classic gray alien or something like that, but knew that no one would believe us so we didn't tell anyone else. The next day, we went back to the spot in the woods and found our lighter standing upright on the log where we were setting. The odds of it falling and landing like that are very, very low, adding to another creepy factor. Did this thing find it and put it there? We also walked over to the tree where we saw it and found the branch that it was grasping. It was a good 10 to 12 feet above the ground, we couldn't even reach it by jumping, and there was nothing around. No stumps, no rocks, no lower branches. Nothing that it could have been standing on. So it had to be tall to appear there. Weirdly, the leaves on the ground had been disturbed all around the area beneath the tree. Not like just tracks or something, but it was as if something had intentionally brushed the leaves away and then dug some shallow holes. Maybe four to six of them, about six to eight inches deep and two to three inches wide. My friend was a biology major who had been an Eagle Scout and now works in a state park. So he knew a good deal about most of the area's wildlife and didn't know of anything that would disturb the ground in that fashion. Plenty of animals dig, but they don't sweep away an area probably five foot by five foot of leaves like that just to dig a couple of holes. He couldn't find any other tracks leading away from the area either. We never went back out there after dark again, and never saw it again either. 
Anyway, that's my possible encounter with a crawler. Make of it what you will. This took place at some point between 12 and 1.30 last night, New Zealand Standard Time. For context, I'm a programmer and do most of my work on commission for United States clients, so I live pretty nocturnally. Finishing at around 12, I decided to go for a walk to get my head out of my programming mindset so I could actually get some sleep. It's midsummer here, and there was a decent amount of moonlight, so this wasn't really outside of my normal behavior. After walking around for about 15 minutes, I reached the furthest street from my house, as I live in a very small town. This street runs along a large embankment, which is next to a biking track and a bit of forest that separates it from the river. As I got there, I turned right to loop back into town. This is when I actually saw the crawler. My first conclusion was that it was a horse, because it was standing on all fours in the middle of a paddock, and there are plenty of horses around this area. I quickly realized that it wasn't, though. Once I noticed a small group of sheep huddled in the corner of the field, which allowed me to get a sense of scale. Once I understood what I was looking at, I quickly crouched down and tried to hide in a patch of tussock near the footpath, but it had already seen or heard me. It took a few alarmingly quick steps towards me, and I thought that it might charge at me for a second, but it stopped just as fast and sat there staring. After maybe 10 minutes, it turned and sped off towards the river without making a sound. Once it was well and truly gone, I got up and began to head home again. But I backtracked instead of walking along the river road like I would usually. I'm pretty sure that I saw it again out of the corner of my eye as I was turning the corner onto my street. Here are some things that I noticed. It was actually a dull pink color. Like overboiled meat, rather than a pure gray. It had the same sunken dark pits for eyes that I see others describe. And at first, I thought it had no mouth, but it actually seemed to have an overly large mouth and lack of lips, making it appear mouthless. Rather than appearing emaciated or bony, it was weirdly smooth, and I couldn't see the outline of its ribs or anything. I put smooth in quotes because it was wrinkly, but not lumpy or bony. When I moved, it wasn't running on all fours. Instead, it ran on its feet and used its hands to steady itself on objects like fence posts and the ground if nothing else was around. It was mainly balanced on the balls of its feet, like a person squatting. My best guess as to its speed would be around 80 kilometers per hour, based on how quickly it crossed the road. When it was near me, everything went dead quiet. And I don't mean just the animals, insects, and stuff. Even the sounds of the river were basically inaudible and I don't recall even hearing my own breathing. Has anyone else ever heard of this? Before I dive into my story, I want to address a couple of things that I feel need to be addressed. This is my third post. I can understand how, from an outside perspective, the events I'm posting here are beginning to sound like a tall order, who experiences this many bizarre, disturbing paranormal incidences in the span of six or eight years. Since I was a teenager, I've done my very best to stay away from populated areas. I am passionate about the outdoors, not big on people and have intentionally gravitated towards areas that are at least rural, but often total wilderness. Strange things happen away from the places that people frequent. If I lived in downtown New York or Toronto or Los Angeles and spent 15 years doing my best to stay in rough, inner-city areas, I would probably have just as many stories about shootings, carjackings, break-ins, and that sort of thing. But I've spent 15 years doing my damnedest to stay away from places like that. And stories like these are the statistical result of that lifestyle choice. 2. I've added verification photos on my profile, both in government uniform and in street clothes, 
to add credence to my story because I want one people who have never experienced stuff like this to understand that real bizarre things can and do happen to regular people and two people who have experienced the same or similar to feel a level of comfort in knowing that I'm the real deal and that they can speak freely about the things our experiences have in common. I'm sticking my neck out for the sake of veracity. I don't want to be identified. I don't want you people I know in real life who may see this to start doing the math. Don't pry. If you think you know me in person, no you don't. I don't want to talk shop about what park I work for, what I do, or the town I live in. I don't want to play guessing games. Respect my privacy. I've given lots of info and that's all the info there is. Now on to what happened. Late last year, I moved out west to Alberta to take a government job in the Rocky Mountains working for a national park. My job involves working hands-on in the park, and in some ways is similar to being a bylaw officer. The reason that this is relevant is because I spend a lot of time with my boots quite literally on the ground, getting paid to drive back and forth over the Continental Divide. I know the park and its surroundings like the back of my hand at this point. I am highly aware of the animals and plants that live there. I'm comfortably in the backcountry, maybe more than I ever have been, and I know what kinds of things one can expect to encounter in these forests, and where. It was a beautiful sunny day in about mid-June of this year. Spring had finally begun, and the weather was starting to get nice. It was about 15 degrees, roughly 60 Fahrenheit. I had an unexpected day off of work. My girlfriend had a half a day, and so I got the bright idea of picking her up from work and taking her to an area called the Spray Valley. I wasn't really up for a big hike that day, but I had read online that there was a viewpoint along Highway 742 that offered an amazing view of Mount Assiniboine, the most prominent mountain in that part of the Rockies, and so I thought it might be a good place to drive to and check out for something to do. The easiest way to get to the valley, if you're already in the mountains, is to take the 742 from the town of Canmore, following it over Whiteman's Gap, a pass that traverses the saddle between two large peaks. As soon as we got up to elevation, it was pretty apparent that spring had sprung to a way lesser extent up there. There was still some lingering snow on the slopes, though the road was clear and we were shocked to see mountain goats licking the salt from the trail in front of us, which is totally unheard of at such a low elevation as they're typically high up in the subalpine and alpine areas where there are no roads. Late snow melts will do this, as there's just no way for them to be in their usual habitat when it's inundated with snowpack. This becomes important later. Calling the 742 a highway is pretty generous. It's really just a gravel two-lane snaking deep into the backcountry. The whole area around the Spray Valley has a reputation for being less tourist-slash-family friendly, and can be somewhat dangerous to reach depending on the weather up the pass. It's way more remote than most car accessible areas adjacent, and often has harsher conditions. As a result, it sees way fewer people than any nearby parks, and that day was no exception, especially given that winter was hanging on to some extent at altitude. But we noticed as we got further and further away from the comparatively busy section of the pass that we weren't really seeing anybody at all, we drove for an hour and some change, and soon we went from passing a couple of cars every 15 or so minutes to literally being the only ones on the road. The parking lots at the roadside day use areas were completely empty. We arrived at the viewpoint. I threw it in park at the edge of the road and we got out of the truck. What struck me most was just how quiet things were. Aside from the sound of birds and our own voices, we were well and truly alone. The valley was long and wide, and with the mountains at a reasonable distance from the highway in both directions, there wasn't much opportunity for an echo. We had a long shot of visibility in each direction down the highway, and there was clearly nobody around. Moreover, all the cars we had passed on the way had kicked up a lot of dirt from the gravel on the dry valley floor, which can be quite arid due to the rain shadow of the peaks around it, and there wasn't a speck of it to be seen. No dust clouds, no sound, no approaching cars. When I say we were alone, I mean that every sense confirmed this fact. 
I had downloaded the area on Google Maps before we lost cell signal, and so I opened it up to check what was nearby. There were a couple of alpine trailheads in either direction, probably unusable with the snow sticking around, and a closed seasonal helipad about two kilometers across the canyon. No wonder the lack of crowds. We spent 10 or 15 minutes admiring the view, took some pictures, walked over to a pond at the edge of the road, and sat there for a bit while my girlfriend, an herbalist, admired some of the plants, noting how much smaller and earlier they were in the growing season than the plants in our part of the Rockies. Before long, we noticed across the pond, about a hundred foot from the highway, there was a small outbuilding. Even though the Spray Valley has much less infrastructure than other areas due to the low volume of visitors, it still does have some facilities like bathrooms at trailheads, and so we assumed that's what it was. Curious about what trailhead it was, we walked back to the truck and cruised back towards the parking lot we had seen just a minute or so before we had parked. I pulled in, and once again this lot was empty. No cars, no dust. Not even any obviously disturbed gravel from 4x4 tires or anything like that. I remember this clearly because I was kind of reveling in how alone we were, since I'm used to wrangling tourists and giving out citations. We got out of the truck, and suddenly I was hit with this familiar sense of unease. Other outdoorsmen will know what I mean. I've spoken to hunters, wardens, guides, and other people who get it too. What I mean is that usually I just know when there's a bear around. I don't think it's anything supernatural. My guess is that I can smell them or something, and don't realize it consciously. I had that sense of vigilance wash over me, and so I reached into the center console and grabbed my bear spray and attached it to my belt. I stopped for a minute, my girlfriend close by, while I listened to see if I could hear anything. I couldn't, so we approached the beginning of the trail. It was a long, even clear-cut grassy area, and reminded me more of the type of double-track trails you'd see in the flatlands than a mountain trailhead. It was so wide that the park had actually placed a couple of granite slabs in front of it to keep people from taking motor vehicles down to it. We read the map on the sign, and we both took a few pictures of our surroundings, standing on the slabs, when suddenly we heard a sharp crack about 20 to 25 feet away from us, in the forest to our right. The forest was thick, dense, mossy, and surprisingly damp for a valley that was dry enough for dust clouds to hang in the air for minutes after a vehicle passed by. There was just about zero visibility beyond the first few trees. The crack itself immediately concerned me, because it sounded to me like the type of crack you'd get from breaking in half one of those first pieces of wood you'd put on a fresh campfire. Bigger than a kindling, a decent-sized branch from the sound of it. And so, whatever made the noises needed to have some sort of weight-slash-strength to have broken something that large. I immediately put myself between my girlfriend and the forest, and we called out to see if somebody was there. I heard nothing, and so, assuming it was an animal, I started yelling the typical stuff we're taught to yell when a bear is around in the backcountry, as they're intentionally socialized with rubber bullets to run when confronted. I clapped five times in quick succession. About seven seconds passed, and something in the forest, 20 to 25 feet away, clapped back twice, slowly and deliberately at me. I have large, thick palms. I measured them as I'm writing this all down to get an idea of how big my hands actually are. Spread wide as if I were about to clap, they're eight by five inches. They have a distinctive sound because of their size, and whatever it was that clapped at us sounded extremely similar. So something at least my size was physically clapping at us, or something was able to mimic the sound I made perfectly. I mentioned before that, due to the width of the valley, there wasn't really any room for the type of echo you might get in a narrow gully or up on the pass. Also, echoes have that natural shimmering reverb that decays over time as the sound waves bounce back at you. What we heard certainly did not. It was real clapping in real time. It took about two seconds flat for me to go from standing next to the sign to half dragging, half carrying my girlfriend back to the truck. We paused with our backs against the vehicle, straining to see into the woods from across the parking lot. 
trying to hear what we could hear. I don't remember what I yelled, but I yelled something to let whatever was standing over there know that it wasn't welcome. And we got in the truck and I peeled out. My girlfriend was very upset. I was pretty shaken myself. And I wasn't really keen on being in the backcountry anymore. The whole drive back towards the pass, we felt off, as if we were being watched. And even though it was a warm, sunny day, the atmosphere was hostile and weird. We stopped at a picnic area by the Spray Lakes further up the valley to see if we could make it a palate cleanser. But I just couldn't relax and was on edge the whole time. We still talk about it frequently. And everybody I've spoken to with serious backcountry experience is equally as puzzled by what I experienced. A few of the friends I have interested in the paranormal have noted that crawler slash crawler like creatures and Sasquatches are both known to mimic people. Debunking a few explanations that I or other people have raised. A hiker messing with us. As I mentioned before, there was absolutely no evidence of any vehicle nearby and many of the trailheads in the area were difficult or impossible to access due to the late melt. For sure, nobody could have gotten there without a vehicle. Even a cycling trip would take at least half a day, maybe longer, from any population center nearby. There is no through hike that connects to the trail in question. Also, the general etiquette here in the backcountry, because of what a hostile environment it can be, is to make your presence known and address other hikers when you see or hear them. Two, somebody who lived back there. No doubt that there are people who live in secluded areas of the Rockies and eke out a living poaching, foraging, or bringing supplies back from town. I've quite literally found their camps myself, but with a valley as wide as the spray, there was zero reason for them to be so close to a trailhead or the highway. There's plenty of water sources further into the bush. And given the late growing season, there was no special wild edible like berries or spruce tips that might have attracted them. 3. A beaver slapping its tail on the pond. A beaver slap is very distinctive, wet, flat, and surprisingly a loud sound. It sounds more like hitting a noodle or a flutter board on the surface of a pool. This was a crisp, fleshy sound, and it wasn't coming from the pond beside us. It was right there in front of us in the woods. There was no sign of another human being within 25 plus kilometers in any given direction from where we were that day, possibly further. No noise, no dust, no cars, no bikes, no voices, no footsteps, no reason for anybody to be there so early in the season, with the snow still on the slopes. I can't help but think whatever we disturbed was trying to communicate with us but I am very glad that we didn't stick around to find out what it wanted. Curious or malevolent as it may have been. Hey y'all, I wasn't sure about posting this, but why not? I'm very skeptical and thought that it was in my head for some time. About 10 years ago, I was on my way south on 99 between Sacramento and Galt at like 11 p.m., driving about 70 miles per hour when near the side of the freeway, I saw something very long, white slash pale pinkish with a face I remember describing as a rabbit slash bear slash man. Its eyes reflected back at me very brightly and it moved very, very smoothly and quickly back into the brush on weird, messed up limbs. I was moving so fast and had loud music on, so I wasn't able to observe for long or listen for any sounds. It scared the crap out of me. And when I got to my then boyfriend's house, I broke down, trying to describe what I saw. At this point, 10 long years later, and my substances between now and then, I frankly do not remember exactly what it looked like. But I remember how I felt, and my now husband is able to tell me exactly how I described it to him. I convinced myself that it wasn't real, and never really talked about it. But a few years later, maybe five or six years ago, I told a very close friend who then freaked out and said that her friend, someone I'd never met before, saw something similar. 
that was off the freeway in Northern California, and a car full of people all saw it. He had described it to her exactly the same way that I described it to my boyfriend slash husband. We met a while later, and both had one of those weird crying slash goosebumps, but not actually sobbing moments talking about it. Now, I don't know about the Skinwalker thing or Slenderman. Neither of us saw it stand up right. But some of the stories here do kind of seem like the same thing. Not gonna lie, I partly hesitated because it just seems like a lot of role playing on here. But I'm too curious now. Has anyone here seen something like that? With more of an animal face, messed up limbs and on all fours? Or am I dealing with something different? Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope that you have an excellent night's sleep. Please enjoy the extra rain at the end of this video. Good night, everybody.